Hey YouTube, I am Tiberius and you're about to watch an edited recording of a Twitch stream. You can check out my Twitch using the link in the video description. If you enjoy the content, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Thank you and enjoy the video. Alright, let's do this. So, the nice thing about these is there is a mixture of code review usually. Uh, yes, extract. So if I add cursed party, there we go. All right, look at the Docker file, see if there's anything interesting. It loads, okay, it's installing Google Chrome. <laughs> Which presumably means this is going to have a client side exploit. Okay, supervisor, we don't really care about. All right. <laughs> oh, God, this is Node. Yeah, Puppeteer. So, Puppeteer, I believe, is the Node. Um, library for doing, um, like creating service, uh, server side, well, sorry, creating bots that can do browsing. Okay. What have we got here? Nothing really. Let's change the music. Oh, yeah. Chill hop time, exactly. All right. What do we got here? All right. So this is. Nothing really interesting there. Okay, the database. So it creates a table party requests. Party request add, insert into Halloween name, email, costume, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah, here we go. So it's a headless browser. It logs in as admin. Okay, so the the flag is in the JWT token. Uh, okay, it goes to admin. And then it deletes all. All right. We won't look at the views just yet. Let's look at the JWT helper. All right, that's... So it's just going to... It's generating an app secret with a random 69 bytes. Nice. Um, using that to sign and verify with HS256, so that should be fine. Um, okay, auth middleware. Okay. Index. If we get, it's going to render the index to HTML file. Post API submit. Um, okay. Try and get admin and make sure that your user role is admin. So it looks like we can, without authenticating, 
add these party requests. All right, and then we have so an index page, which I presume just lets us add requests, and then the admin page. All right. Okay. So immediately, I can see this is going to be some kind of XSS, I think. So this is the template. We've done SST SSTI before, but this is a template. Um, this is okay. All this is okay. All right? Uh, this isn't. Why is this not? Anyone in chat know? Yeah, it's not technically a pipe, it's basically a filter, but yeah, it uses the pipe character. So, it's probably if I do, oh, there we go. So, templates are great, because if you use templates properly, like this, uh, templates will automatically encode everything, right? So they will, they'll take whatever you place here and encode it to HTML entities, which basically renders most XSS, like, um, I was going to say it renders it unrenderable. Uh, that's, that is the line in my course now, thanks to Al. Uh, but it, yeah, it renders it, um, I guess, unexploitable is a better word. Um, however, if you use the safe filter, what this is saying it's telling the template, hey, this, this field is safe to output. Okay. So if you ever have a filter safe in a template, it means that if you're able to get um, HTML code in here, it won't get escaped. It won't uh, get converted to HTML entities. So you will have some form of HTML injection, uh, potentially cross-site scripting. Um, I mean, let's open the browser. And... <laughs> we can probably get a ping back very easily then. If we use, so it's the Halloween name. So if I do an image, source equals, let me get a collaborator and copy that to clipboard and if i just do something like that email is going to be tiberius we're going to be a monster actually are there any good examples i'm going to be a zombie do you prefer tricks or treats or well, obviously treats i volunteer to bring a shareable snack sure whatever Okay. So potentially what that did is when the admin next logs in, they're going to go to the admin page and trigger our image loading thingy. Um, But maybe not. Because it calls bot.visit immediately. <laughs> um, oh, I did see this, though. Style self is fine. Ah, maybe it's this. So I use I could use Docker to just run this to be honest. 
So the great thing about these being Docker containers, or sorry, Docker files, is we can we can basically change the code and and spawn it ourselves, and then we can log in as an admin user. So what I can do, maybe vim challenge, uh, is it bot.js? Yeah. So I can just print. We're going to console.log token. What I think is that, so what I think is happening is the content security policy is getting in the way. Um, like the image source. So I believe because the image source is self, it means we can't, then we can create images. So I wonder actually, okay, so maybe instead of doing that, we'll send this to repeater while that's building and we'll just do a script, I guess, because script tag should be okay, I think. Judging by this, script source self, Oh, but inline isn't. Oh, okay, this is tricky. Let's copy this content security policy into the Google one. <laughs> okay, object. Okay, so yeah, object SRC is missing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There is a, yeah, there are some bypasses. Okay, yeah, this one. What's the default SRC, actually? Oh, default's missing as well. Okay, this might be okay, then. <laughs> um, so we're just going to escape these um let's just see what this actually is oh it's just a script alert okay so what we can do instead is potentially just do window dot location equals and then we'll grab a new collaborator url <laughs> Come on. Well, let's see if that did anything. <laughs> okay, so we have this. We can now go, hopefully, to this site. Yeah, okay, good. If I just do... 
her treats and this. Um, that didn't work. Why didn't that not work? <laughs> okay, there we go. There's the cookie. So if we copy that, inspect, um, <laughs> I think it was just session. Uh, don't know why that's... Okay, well, come on. Thank you for following. Now, if I go to admin, there we go. Okay, so now we have access to the admin panel. Right. Um, that's not what I'm doing here. I guess collaborator didn't work. So what we can do though <laughs> is send this to repeater and then just stick some stuff in. And then if we refresh. Yeah, yeah. Refuse to apply the inline style. Wait, what? No. Hmm. I think. Thank you for following. Let's just comment out this delete all thing. Let's Submit this again. There's our new cookie. I don't know if it is from Cyber Apocalypse. All I know is it's one of the challenges. Goodness, I don't know why that's... Why I need to set it more than once. Okay, here we go. So if we do a strikeout, I mean, let's just delete that, I guess. Guess we can't do that either. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, we can do HTML, we just can't do, we can't do a script, I imagine. Yeah. Refuse to execute inline script. All right, this is good. This means we can actually try and do stuff. Let's go to this though. Let's just delete everything. <laughs> so again all of this is happening locally if we can get an exploit working locally we can then 
easily do one um, in the live system. So let's have a look and see what went wrong with the the object. Refuse to frame. Ah. Let's Google that. Hmm. I didn't see this in last year's. I don't think it is last year's. <laughs> Um, we can try this one. I think we're gonna have to thank you for following double escape that all right we'll see something went wrong Hmm. Oh, I'm an idiot. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, this one does something, but Flash Player is no longer supported, so I don't know if that's even going to work. Somehow I doubt it. Oh. I didn't see this. This might be it instead. Let's have a look at that CSP again. <laughs> um, where is it? Index.js. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. So it's allowing it's allowing stuff from this site. So. We could probably just Google Angular JS. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> So I think this will work.
let's try it. Uh, I'm gonna delete everything again. Uh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> so if we can load stuff from this CDN, if we can load the Angular JS live, we we can just do um, Angular JS um, cross site scripting. Okay. Did it load? It did. Okay. So now if we go Portswigger Angular JS XSS. You need to have ng Yeah. I wonder if we can just do Hmm. Oh, you just need to have the NG app above the expression? All right. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Maybe we need to do something like div Oops. NG app. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Forgot to remove this bit. Yes. <laughs> All right, today I learned you can just put ng app literally anywhere. All right. XSS cheat sheet. So usually you wouldn't do that. It's usually basically um you, like angular would be enabled. Every time you're in an app and you have Angular, um, and you can inject just anything, really, this is the danger of Angular. Basically, if we look at the source code, and this is this is basically why every time you see me do server-side template injection and I do this, remember how I look at the source code, right? The reason I look at the source code is that these payloads are right, like this is a server-side template injection payload, right? But in the source of the HTML code, it hasn't done anything. Yet here it's 49. Because this is also a client-side template injection payload. And the difference being, this is why you should always, always check the source code whenever you're doing this. Um, if this was 49 here, right? If I submit this to the site like I did here, right? and it comes back as 49 in the page source, that's server-side template injection. If it comes back as this, but there's a 49 in the page itself, that's client-side template injection. Big difference. Uh, okay, so basically what AngularJS is, it's very commonly used 
um, within templates as well. But effectively, you can have client-side templates. The idea being you, you store the templates as HTML files, right? And then you load them in. So you load the HTML in, or even the, even like as a string, you load the string in, and then you pass the template uh, ver values from a JSON object. Okay. Yeah, the root vuln is the CSP misconfig. Um, the fact is, you if you have HTML injection, which basically you could do this. I mean, I guess you don't even, yeah, if you did do HTML injection. So you have HTML injection. I was able to inject a script tag um, and pass it a link to Angular on the CDN. And the reason I have to use the CDN is because the CDN is allowed. This script source means self means uh, it can use JavaScript that is hosted on the server in files, right? It can't use inline JavaScript, but it also will accept JavaScript hosted here. So the HTML you have served is 7 times 7 but the JS is modifying the DOM exactly. This is very technically speaking DOM XSS, but nobody ever calls it DOM XSS. This is client-side template injection. All right. Um, but yeah, if I go over to the element here, you'll see it's 49 in the DOM. And if I, if I right click and edit the actual HTML, it's been changed in the DOM itself. Um, okay, so luckily there are some AngularJS um, exploits. So a quick history about AngularJS. Um, when AngularJS was released, people quickly realized that you could get um, cross-site scripting via it. Um, so for instance, using this payload. Um, and so what the AngularJS devs did is they implemented a sandbox. Okay. And basically what the sandbox did was it would do a bunch of checks on the values being passed to the template. And if they were caught as being malicious, it would not execute the malicious code. Okay. Um, and quite hilariously, every as you can probably see here, every time they release an update, um, somebody would discover a new sandbox escape. So if you're running AngularJS between 101 and 115, this would escape the sandbox. Okay? This one escapes the sandbox in 120121. Okay? All the way up uh, to here. And you might think, okay, so greater than 1.6, we can use this. Um, but this is Angular 2, right? And what do we actually use? Uh, so no, we use Angular 1.8.3. So you may be quite, you may be thinking, well, why haven't they, why haven't they, you know, solved this yet? This has been known since 1.6.0. Well, something funny happened when they released 1.6.0. Um, they had, they had put so much code into the sandbox, it was slowing down main execution of Angular JS. The sandbox had got so complicated in trying to defeat XSS that they removed it in 1.6.0 and basically told the devs, um, yeah, you just need to do your own checks. You need to make sure that you're not passing untrusted data into a client-side template. They And to be fair, yeah, it was really seriously slowing down stuff. Like, it was ridiculous. Um... Because I mean, look at let me look at this crap that they managed to figure out. But yeah, so there were look at how many like how many sandbox escapes there were, and and by the way, you can't just like once you moved on to this like uh, sorry one point two point zero, you still had to make sure this didn't work. So it just got really, really, really complicated, and then they gave up. Um, so now we should just be able to use this. So if I go back to this, I delete my code. So if I put this in here, 
and send that. Did not work. <laughs> Let's see if you have... Oh! That's interesting. Hmm. Is there another one then? This should technically... So we're getting caught up, so there may be more to this than we thought. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um... I wonder if we could just do some of this. It's not very easy. That's the whole point. These were the, the ratings on this are just stupid. Um, I guess we could try this one. Oh, I get yes, CSP bypasses. Here we go. Should probably been reading this one all along. So let's delete, make sure we delete everything. Okay, so I had to do a, I had to do a control X there. Uh, so, yeah, via OnCut, probably should have read that. Okay, let's try this one. And to escape these. Uh. Okay. <laughs> That's like an on focus. I don't know why it didn't auto focus though. Let's just do this one. You usually can do like this, autofocus equals autofocus. Could you have encoded the initial payload, get around a filter? No. Okay, it's just... It's all gone. So that's auto focusing, but it's not auto focusing. Let's try this one, I guess. We just have to keep going through them, really. Um... Okay, that looks okay. Very strange. Oh! That one uses something different. <laughs> Uh, 
Let's just try that. Basically, if I click it, it's fine. <laughs> There's got to be some other ones. Hmm. Yeah, this excess cheat sheet is, is really good. Um, so this, the, yeah, maybe. I guess maybe I just shouldn't do this. No, actually, no, I do need it in the app. <laughs> oh, I probably should have deleted this first. Hmm. I feel like we're almost there. Uh, the other thing I can think of is doing, maybe just putting it in a form. The flag is in the cookie, yeah. The problem is getting it to actually get bypassed. Um, I guess we can just Google it. Angular JS. Uh, There we go. Hmm. There's no way of calling alert. There's a direct call and maintaining.
So here we have a few. Yeah, we need to steal a cookie. Hmm. We could use on error, but the problem with on error is. Oh, actually, what am I talking about? Of course I can use on error. Mm. This is ng on error, right. Mm. Uh, what am I doing? Okay. I was thinking I can't, I can't use on error because I can't load... Um, images, but then I remembered, yeah, of course I can use images. Um, all right. Oh, hang on. Composed, did you say composed path was, no, this one is all right. We're going to use this one. Um... But we're going to put it in an image tag instead. So we're going to use source equals A. That should load a local image. And then we do on error, I think it's like that, right? This should be the same. <laughs> All right, let's try that. Haha, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Now uh, we just need some um, actual payload JavaScript. <laughs> I can't use eval instructor, right? So I think <laughs> I think I can do I can just replace alert with window dot replace no sorry location dot replace. And then this with I think. Oh, wait. Something went wrong. Mm. Leave or invocation. <laughs> hmm. 
Maybe if I just do this. Hmm. Thank you for following. I need to, I just need a way to basically Angular JS. I guess I could use open maybe. Let's just actually, let me do alert again. Let me just make sure we're alerting the string, okay. Ah. That's why. So, I think... I need to split this into um, I think yeah okay and then I need to do I think. I think that'll work. Come on. Did that not? Oh, yeah, it's going through them all. Hmm. <laughs> oh, wrong one. Yes, yeah, it's just not. <laughs> yeah. So obviously this just iterates through I guess it splits everything, which is not what I want. Hmm. Can we just do the from char code thing? Because then we can just use hack hack uh, hack person.
or not. Come on. Why would you double? Why would you escape after the the quote? I think that's how it's done, right? <laughs> Just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. We're very close. I'm just going to figure out, basically, it seems like these payloads, or maybe this one will work. I'm actually just going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to copy this into a because I don't actually want this bit, I just want this. Right, let's see if that works. Okay, good. So now what happens if I do, I guess. Oops. Keep deleting it. Yes. Okay. Uh, so can I just do open? <laughs> Delete this one. Okay. Can I do location dot replace? What is this illegal invocation thing? Mm. 
Um, Hmm. <laughs> Anyone got any ideas? I know, I mean, we've basically got it. I just need to... I mean, I just need to execute <laughs> JavaScript. <laughs> what happens if I just do alert one in here? I wonder. Okay. <laughs> uh Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. It was slightly easier. Okay. Um. <laughs> so let's just do this. Uh, actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to send our cookies to example.com. Boom, there we go. All right. Uh, what am I doing? Let's put my burp collaborator payload there and copy this thing. And then make sure the site's still up. It is. Fingers crossed. We can just go back to this one. Really hope it works. Oh, I'm so good at this. Copy that. Okay, I'm happy. Um, I think we just need this bit, right? There be the flag. And submit flag. And mute this just in case it does that stupid noise. Difficulty rating, I would put it at probably a seven. Um, basically, you have to understand CSPs, AngularJS. Very cool, though. Thank you for following. On the screen are my socials. Please follow me on Twitter, join the Discord server, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, follow me on Twitch to get alerted when I go live. You can also find all these links in the video description.